Are you guys going to play on that side? Hello everyone. Um, we're just um, getting a few more minutes for people, or a couple more moments for people to um, come in. Um, welcome, um, welcome to the Jodum um, virtual workshop. Um, this was something that we wanted to be able to do um, to do virtually. We wanted people to have. A, um have a way to um connect um and find information or learn new things um to um that has to do with children um a lot of these um a lot of these pra uh, practices um um are shared um through um, our elders or through our family members and uh, sometimes we don't have those family members or we are off the reservation and we live far away from home and um, and you know or you never got to grow up you know you grew up an urban urban native and uh, you don't know any of these um, ways of um, of the foods especially wild foods that has um, has its um, history um, or in our, um, it has our history um, for, for being autumns. Um, there's a lot of um, cool things, uh, especially uh, relating back to the Jodham, uh, one part being connected to some of our, um, one of our legends. Um, and it actually comes back to the things that we do um, as an organization. And one of the things that we do as an organization is um, growing um, the art of food. And um, this totem has uh, one ver version of the, uh, the legends or the stories um, or the storytelling um, ties back to the totem. Um, so with that, you know, we... Um, wanted to welcome people. Um, we wanted people to you know, experience these, um, no, uh, because experience this uh, virtually. Um, if, you know, for some reason they can't make it to uh, the community gathering or the um, or workshop in person. This was one way that we were gonna connect and you know, in a way it brings us closer and meeting everyone. Um, some names I do recognize, some names I don't recognize, and it's good to uh, hear from you. Um, so I'm, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, I wanted the, our, um, so I'm the farm manager for Aho Center for Sustainable Agriculture. My name is Sterling Johnson. Um, yeah, and I was born and raised on the Dawn of the Nation. So, um, but I wanted uh, this, because this was a group effort and a team effort. Um, I wanted, uh, for the beginning, um, I wanted the, um, our apprentices to um, share their, um, uh, sh share their, uh, their, um, their um, personal stories of um, children, you know, their, uh, or their earliest memories of uh, picking children, so. Uh, either one of you, Juke or Elijah, go ahead and share uh, if you have any memories about picking Jordan. Uh, hello. Afternoon or good evening, everyone. My name is Juke Patricio. Um, I'm not too sure if we're sharing the screen. Do you want me to turn on my screen, Sterling? Or do you want? Do you guys want to see me? <laughs> mm 
Whatever you're comfortable with, you go ahead. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Duke Patricio. I'm a farm, farm apprentice with the Ajo uh, Center for Sustainable Agriculture. Um, been with them for about a year now. I've uh, been picking Jordan for quite some time. Um, you know, for a while it was to make money, but you know, as I did it more and more, I found out more about it. And now, you know, I feel comfortable with teaching people and, you know, telling people that it's out there and the whole process on how to cook it and dry it and rehydrate it. So um, I probably cook, I, I probably pick at least every year. Or I try to pick every year. I didn't last year. It was kind of weird and a uh, weird off year. But um, earliest memory are... One that kind of stands out for me, I can think of is, um, you know, growing up when I was a teenager, uh, you know, I wasn't the best student at times and I didn't go to school, <laughs> I didn't go to, uh, I didn't go to school that day. And my aunt, she was working with the organization called um, Thon Autumn for Community Act, or Thon Autumn Community Action. And, um, we ended up crossing paths with her and she got mad at us because she knew that we didn't go to school, me and my cousin. So that was one of the things that she made us do because they were uh, buying it at the time. And, you know, she's like, well, if you guys are gonna be not be in school, then you guys should go off and do something. So anyways, we went off and we went out and picked and, you know, we got paid for it and it was pretty cool to know that we can make money from it but it wasn't until a little bit later on that I found out more about it and, you know, learned a little bit about how we used to pick this long time ago. And, you know, it's a food that's always there because it's there in the desert and it's provided every year. We just have to go out and pick it. But, you know, back then, um, I like to go to concerts and stuff like that. And, you know, that was kind of a little way for me because I didn't have a job and I was going to school that I got to make a little money on the side. And me and my cousin would go out in the evenings after after school and or on the weekends. And that was just something that we always did every year, knowing that Toka would buy the the stuff. And then we started telling people about it too. And it made me feel good to know that, you know, not not uh then not a lot of people knowing too much about it, that just from people seeing it and just the uh, I guess. The, um, I don't know the words I'm looking for, but uh, the need, I guess, uh, people were asking for it more and people that I knew were actually going out and they all had their own little groups that would go out and pick. But that was back when Toka had it. And I know that um, the CSA is currently uh, buying Choya Buds too. And that's something that, you know, everybody always asks and, you know, the, the easiest answer, I always say it's in your backyard, but I know not a lot of people do have it. But, you know, here in Southern Arizona, the choya is like all over the place and it's just knowing when to go out and pick it. But yeah, been doing it for a while, I could go on. And I guess that's my little story there. Go ahead, Elijah. Hello, my name is Elijah Marietta. I've been with the, I've been an apprentice for the AHO CSA for about over a year. And um, I didn't, I'm just now learning about like harvesting and cooking jodam. Um, I didn't grow up doing it. So, you know, this is, I mean, it's not um, like, this is my second year picking and learning about it. So it's still, I'm still in the learning process, but my earliest memory would just be like seeing it like, every like I didn't see it a lot but I did see it sometimes being eaten and I wondered like where or how to get it but I never really asked 
So yeah. Oh, no, thank you, Elijah, for sharing. And, um, but so we, uh, like uh, Jake said, we are buying uh, Jodom. It is um, something that is desired, um, especially for um, us being as a, a cafe uh, running out of Ajo. Uh, we provide uh, food, traditional um, or traditional um, food, uh, wild harvested and farm grown uh, foods like the bao or the horn or the gaitza and uh, the pipkan, uh, using it and preparing it in different uh, culinary um, arts. So whether it's boiling or sauteing um, or um, steaming um yeah we are doing this uh, to educate people about um traditional food so uh we're gonna go ahead and let uh just share a video and then i have a slideshow to break down everything um what it takes to pick joto so uh go ahead and uh, share your uh, video if it, we hopefully it works we're, um it's because it's a really cool video um so um, it kind of shows everything and um, differently. Um, we, we're going to break down everything step by step. Once that tip's gone, it starts. Uh, um, there's a there, there's actually a couple over here that are starting to flower. That's why you start noticing. But you want you want to just pick it before that. Uh, for what I was told, anytime you're gonna um, pick, you make an offering. Should be this, and then you always want to do it uh, downwind. Not upwind because the sports they just fly off. Um, what I ended up happening to you, then, and you'll see it not so much in this, but in the Honda, the teddy bear cactus. Crazy because you know we would make this into a meal. And you eat a lot of it like soon after you pick it, rather than yeah, yeah. So none, none of it really got to make it to sale. <laughs> That's too big, huh? stick out. Do it over the over it so the strips are going in there.
All right. Uh, thank you, Duke. Uh, I know, um, I hope everyone got to see it. If not, I uh, do apologize. Um, I know the internet, um, it, it does become spotty sometimes um, where we're from. So, um, I don't, uh, but thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Duke, for, for, um, uh, making this video um, is just something that um, something that um, for me personally, I'll just share my my story. Um, I grew up um, where we harvested at uh, that St. James Rodantro, um, St. James, um, uh, just two miles out of the cells uh, on your way to the power. Um, so have you ever seen the big old sign with uh, the horseshoes spelling out St. James? That's where I grew up. Um, there was no running water. There's no there's no electricity, and all of it there. No, at that time, um, um, and St. James has been uh, been there for well over a hundred years uh, through the Hussey, uh Johnson, um, and before that. Um, um, before that, um, other people um, who didn't really settle the area but uh, knew that area as a, um, a valuable um, resource. So with, the, with that, the house was built. Uh, my father built a house. Uh, he's in the Shom or the, um, or the, um, the adobe, making adobe bricks. Uh, and then since then, um, uh, we grew up there until my sister was born. And then uh, we had to have um, someone to watch over us and um, and take care of us. So um, since then, uh, after my sister was born, we moved to um, Wichu Oiduk uh, at my uh, great-grandmother's place. And I grew up there ever since then. But the ranch was, um, I still remember the ranch because that was something. Um, I you know I went to the ranch after school and especially um, during the changing of the seasons, um, we would go pick. Um, I had my grandmother to, to um, share, uh, to share the, um, um, to share the, um, the practices with me um and i was so um so grateful um and just not knowing that not everyone uh grows up with this or has someone to share this and as we're moving you know into the future you know using this technology uh to communicate or to showcase you know our our um our history um it's really something that I'm really grateful for. Um, you know, being able to kind of learn my way and learn it from different ways from other people that have um, that know how to pick your up. So I'm going to go and share this uh, slideshow that I made. Um, so, um, so. Um, Actually, thank you. Um, so the process of picking Jordan is a long process. And um, so what do you need? So I'm going to ask um, Elijah and Duke to jump on some of these, some of the, uh, these um, uh, slideshows and they can uh, talk about what it's, um, uh, what it's used, uh, what to do, um, how to harvest. Uh, one of the things that um, we always need no, and um, the day we showed up, um, we didn't have everything we needed. Uh, um, um, some of our tools were being in use, so I wasn't able to bring um, um, some of the tools I needed to uh, to pick. So, um, so you picture right here. Um, this picture was taken at Bashes. Um, at Bashes, um, we, um, 
so one of the things you need is tongues to um, pick the drug on and there's different types of ones. There's black ones, there's um, metal ones, there's ones that um, have space in the middle. Um, that That's kind of one of the things you need first. And a bowl or a harvesting container, a five-gallon bucket or um, something where you can put the trotum. I prefer a bowl uh, only because um, it's white. Um, but I also like the bucket because uh, if you're planning to go harvest a lot of trotum, uh, the bucket's there. Um, and it can uh, take a lot of trotum. Um, you can go, you can carry that bucket around with you and pick um, as much as you want versus the bowl. Um, another another one could be a, a cooking pot too as well. That could be used as um, something to harvest your jodo. Um, so uh, that those are kind of things. And uh, these were you know, inexpensive. Um, um, uh, the tons were about $4 a piece. Um, four dollars a uh, ton. So, um, so if we um, and sometimes it's good to have multiple ones just in case one of them breaks or um, you misplaced it. So, um, it's always good to have extras on time. Or uh, you invited someone and someone says, "Oh, I'm coming," and where are we gonna go pick? And you know, you only had the one, and you thought it was gonna be you. Um, so it's always good to have more. Uh, Jude, go ahead and uh, what do you look for uh, when you're going for children? What do you look for? Um, one of the things I always look out for, I guess, is the color. You want to look for those kind of dark purple. There's usually purple. Sometimes you might find like a greenish color, but the tips is what's the, the main thing you want to be looking at. You see how they all kind of have that point? That's usually what you want to keep an eye out for because sometimes they'll start bulbing. And if it's like a little round or if you can push down on it with your tongue, then it's about to flower. And uh, yeah, I, I was always told not to pick those. You know, I've never actually tasted the other kind, but you know, that's just how I've learned. And, you know, it's just, it's just that uh, the top part, I guess, is what you're looking out for. Okay, did you want me to say more? Uh, I, I guess if you want me to keep going, um, picking. Uh, you see all those little thorns on there? Those are like really loose. So like once you hit it or try to pull, those are more than likely to fly up. And I don't know why, but it's always breezy around this time. So be mindful of the stickers. It's something that is uh, inevitable, I guess. You're bound to get some on you sooner or later, but it's all part of the process. It's well worth it in the end. Okay. Uh, Elijah, <laughs> sorry. Um, um, yeah, Elijah, go ahead and talk about the next um, the next slide. Yes. Um, you after you um, harvest it, you rub shuggy on the jodam so it could take off the stickers. Um, you could use a screen too, which we use, which is much faster because if you're harvesting a lot, then it yeah it speeds up the process. So it, yeah, it takes a while, but you you don't want to leave any stickers on the on the jodam because. Um, yeah, you don't. You wouldn't want to leave it on there, but also if when you boil it, it does fall off too as well. You could see it. It goes to the bottom of the pan.
Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go. Um, yeah, sometimes it's just good to pick with others, uh, family, friends. Um, if we bring someone that hasn't been to the reservation before, it's a good opportunity to bring uh, and share um, culture together. Um, um, Jodham, yeah, it is in different colors. Um, they're red, purple, sometimes yellow, some kind of like lime green, yellowish colors. So there's different types. Um, and some people don't like mixing them. Some people like mixing them. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, pick. Um, if you want to pick more, I always pick with others. Um, with the uh, Nina has a shiggy in her hand, so she's um, um, before that picture, we we're using the shiggy to take off the little thorns on the on the jodum before the tons come and pick them off. Um, last uh, the picture on the with the um, two on the on the right side uh, was from last year. Um, you know, having this teamwork, uh, working together, one cleaning, one picking, um, really helps the process uh, move a little bit faster. Um, it does take time. Um, so, you know, as we're just learning, um, for me, I hadn't picked in a long time. So uh, to be able to pick, you know, back to back is um, just reminding me of home and um, growing up with my uh, grandmother showing me how to do this, it's really cool. Um, and to hear the stories of, of others. Um, yeah, and have fun. I mean, sometimes um, it's good to um, have you know, the dog come out with you and uh, hang out and um, our, our coworkers, our friends, you know, just now have fun, you know. Do do a nice video, make a nice, you know, cool video, or do a fun video. I you know, you know, hashtag it. You know, it's a, a way of communicating to um, the younger generation because that's what they're growing up in right now. Uh, they're they're really growing up in this really, uh, this really unique way of uh, communicating and. You know, sometimes if we don't communicate or don't make things interesting for them, um, it, you know, and, you know, that's one way to get your kids apart, uh, to be a part of it. Uh, for me, it was uh, culture. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have cameras except for disposable cameras. So uh, a lot of this was just creating memories and you know, sharing you know, practices and traditions and uh, really connecting as far as you know, you know where you no know, where this comes from um, really connecting it back to the the legends or the stories and um, and then bringing them forward to the future um, so I guess I'll go ahead and let you talk about what to look for in this picture. All right, so like I had mentioned, um, with the picture on the right, you can see the first one there. That's the one that's about to go and blossom. Um, those are, usually, like I said, you can usually push down on your tongs and you can feel the difference. The other one, uh, that tip is usually pretty hard and that's what you wanna look for right there. And then with the picture on the left, uh, that one has like a bite out of it and you know the animals and uh, the bugs eat too you know they also eat these foods that are out there and um, you know as I learned I was always told too like when you are harvesting that it's not good to I mean not good but I mean like just to be respectful and be mindful of uh, the animals that we share the desert with because you know that is their food too and uh, not to take all of them you know, I learned that it's always good to uh, 
especially with like the first one, if you're going out harvesting, I was always told to not to go for the first uh, bush you see, to go for the second one, because, you know, like, again, you'd be mindful of the animals. And even if you drop some too and you can't reach it, it will get eaten. Something will eat it down there. So yeah, the, the, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, for me, I mean, yeah, thank you, Drew, for sharing. For me, it, no, it is living in harmony with the with the desert uh, um, and and its habitants. You know, um, that's you know, one way to look at it. Uh, one thing that does happen so when it does start flowering, it does change. Um, um, it makes things slimy. So being able to you know, notice those things right away. Um, and to avoid those ones because you now that pollen um, where the nectar is in you know, you know, all you know, helps um, the bees and you know, brings animals together and helps them survive. Um, I even seen uh, deer eat the, the um, new growth of the um, of the turtle. Uh, for some of you that don't hunt the um, the deer will eat the jotum, um to get by through the spring and the summer. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So um, we had ants, uh, bugs, you know, everything. Um, so that's one way. Um, yeah. Um, like that, we uh, bring things together. Um, after sorting through everything um, um, and um, getting ready, getting ready to cook. Um, so what brings me to the next one is the, um, is uh, getting in the pot. Um, if you pick a lot, you want a big pot. If you pick a little bit, you get a little pot. Um, but the, um, um, what usually works well, how I do it, I usually, I usually go ahead and just start hard. Um, um, I give a little bit on the top. So I put in the, um, the jodum first and then the jodum floats up to the top. So um, being able to uh, see where the jodum at and then add the water to that level and add a, maybe a couple more inches so that the boiling water um, you have enough bo water to boil uh, to start the cooking process uh, that's the way I, how I always done it um, Duke I don't know um, how you do it maybe you can share um, pretty much the same I mean like in the video you saw me cook it outside but I mean if you have a little bit it's always you can always do it inside too. You don't have to do it outside. Um, yeah, just letting it simmer. And then as you cook it, uh, like you said, it floats. And as I was teaching my little brother, that's just kind of like one of the things to look out for is that uh, eventually it'll, it'll um, plumping up and they'll drop down. So that's kind of about when you know that it's ready, I guess. Uh, thank you, Duke. Um, yeah, um, having the cooking pot is probably the best thing uh, to do um, to do the water. Um, so in the beginning, you'll see it like this uh, float on the top. Um, I do with the, uh, if I want to cook it faster, I always put the, um, to start boiling it, I, st I put the lid on top. For it to start boiling and to have a hard boil, uh, um, to boil it um, hot, that's how I do it, um, and how I seen it done. And it just keep the the um, the temp uh, the boiling going. And depends on how much you get. That's the other thing too. Sometimes um, cooking it can take um, about half an hour to forty five minutes to two hours if you're doing um, um, 
a lot, a lot more. Uh, usually, this was about four pounds, so uh, three to four pounds. So this, um, uh, yeah, this will tally, probably take about um, 45 minutes uh, from um, putting on the stove to boiling to um, to um, um, for it to cook through. And what you're usually looking for is um, the jodam to be soft um, all the way through because that's what you're doing. You're cooking um, everything all the way through uh, to the jodam. And then, um, and then um, what do you do next? So, uh, so after you're cooking, um, can you share what, what you do next, uh, Juke? Uh, okay, the next um, you want to strain it. Uh, take the the jodam out of the the water. That's what we got there in the strainer. And you want to lay it on something. Preferably, if I mean, if you put it on like a board or something like that, you're gonna have to make sure you go and turn it around. But you want to lay it out and put it in the in the sun. And you want to leave it there for a couple of days, just depending on the weather. Usually it's hot. It should be hot. So it should only take about like two, three days for it to dry out fully. But make sure you cover it. So I used the, just a screen, an old um, screen that we have from the window. And I had another one that I put on there. So it was a lot of airflow through it. So it dried pretty quick. And yeah, it's always, always good to cover too, because because of the, the bugs and all that, you don't want anything getting to it. And yeah, that, that's that's basically it. The sun will uh, dehydrate it and it'll um, break down to a very small form, yeah, like that. And once you have that, you put it in a jar and store it away. And even after you boil it, you can either eat it then and there, or if this is you know, the process, if you're saving it for later, and you can put it in the cabinet, pull it out again, and throw it in some water and it rehydrates like a noodle. All right. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Um, this process you know, takes time, um, takes patience, and really, um, really just becomes you know, something that you, um, uh, once you do it over and over again, it becomes easier. Uh, but you now, Jodom's um, only around for about maybe three weeks tops, uh, mostly about two weeks um, based on how hot it is. Um, I've seen Jodom come as early as mid-March, and I've seen it come as late as um, end of April, um, beginning of May, um, depending on weather. And there's a lot of uh, things to look out for. And, uh, if it's a wet winter, the jodam's can come out later. If it's a dry winter, um, jodam will come out um, sooner. Um, like I said, March. Uh, sometimes it used to be um, beginning of March if it was a really dry winter. Um, I see them come out as beginning of March and harvest it for um, three weeks because um, for some reason when it gets really hot, uh, they expedite their um, process. Um, uh, so one day you're out there and you're looking, and then next you know, two days or three days later, uh, what you are looking at, it's already flowering. Um, so, yeah. But uh, this process is kind of a way of you know, going, being thorough, looking through things, uh, the journal. Um, and yeah, um, and that's why, and all this could be done on your own or it could be done with uh, a group. Um, but yeah, this is how you make uh, the jodam. And uh, like Nidruk said, it does um, dry out and shrink. Um, but if you do put it in water for about um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it pumps back up to its original size. 
and um, then it's ready to eat. Um, I wasn't able um, to get the recipe on there, but uh, one of the things is uh, that we share uh, and we put on our menu an ajo and what used to be at Desiree Cafe was a pico de gallo, um, which is just a salsa. So it's just tomatoes, onions, uh, lime juice, salt, and uh, with the jota mixed with it, and that's it. Uh, one of my favorite things growing up after we we went to go pick um, with my son, um, either with my grandmother or my cousins. Um, one of the things we were bringing back, and they would just be um, um, the jordan um, boiled, and then cooking uh, meat, uh, ground beef, and onions, chopped onions, and uh, letting the juice um, build up with the water and the fat and then adding uh, a little bit of water more, a little bit more water and a little bit of uh, chuy or flour, uh, making it into a gravy and then adding the jordan with it. That's how I grew up eating it. Um, I don't know if um, Elijah and Duke want to share how they um, ate jordan or how they eat jordan. Hello. Yeah, I just um, mix it with something. Like a couple of times, I had a taco salad and just mix it in there, or have it as a side. But yeah, that's just what I do personally. Uh, same thing, just adding it and stuff. Um, my grandmas and my mom they always like to add it like in the salads, like especially like the macaroni salad. It's pretty good. Uh, one of the craziest recipes that I eat, I've had is uh, it on pizza. We used to work with um, the schools a lot when I was with Project Oidak. And they had a, uh, we were making different stuff with them. And that was one of the things we were highlighting because it was around this time. And kid, kids love pizza. So like that was one of the things that kept getting brought up when we said that we wanted to cook with them. So that's what we tried and it came out pretty good. All right, that make me hungry for pizza, Jordan pizza. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is our presentation. It's um, uh, us, you know, just going through the process. So I don't know if any of the, um, anybody on the, um, in this um, virtual workshop has any questions uh, for us or, Um, you can uh, unmute and then go ahead and ask your question. Or we can, um, if we don't, uh, if we can unmute, then uh, you're more welcome to use the chat box to ask your question. Hello? Yes. Um, do you have to boil the jerdam before you dry it out or is it okay to just dry it out after you have picked them and cleaned them? Um, it's better to cook them um, um, just because um, if, we, if, we, um, um, if they're not cooked, um, they don't uh, dry out properly um, and they go chua sometimes. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, and plus you're kind of getting rid of all the um, the germs and bacteria. Okay. That are on the, um, that are on the plant. So, um, but yeah, it's just a way of, um, of um, kind of taking care of that. Okay. And also, um, yeah, uh, it's just a way of um, processing. Um, so uh, anybody else? I mean, I saw a comment. Um, yeah, we, uh, you're welcome, um, Elise. Uh, 
for the video. I mean, this is pretty much how you do it. Um, uh, anybody else have any more questions? Um, if not, uh, we are buying Jodum um, cooked and dried out um, for $15 a pound. And um, you can contact me on my cell phone or email. Uh, cell phone number 520-993-0502 or my email at sterling at ajocsa.com. Um, that's um, the ways you can communicate with me and on the Jordan. Uh, but if no one has any questions, thank you guys for attending. Um, we hope to um, have this video available for um, for next year's harvest um, and the process um, and making things uh, available so uh, when it's ready, you're ready to go pick now. So uh, with that, uh, thank you all for being here and this is it for us. Um, um, enjoy the picking while it lasts and um, love to share your uh, share recipes um, um, with us. If you have any recipes you want like to share or want to know more on how to cook, uh, we're definitely available for that as well. So um, any of the uh, cooking demos we will be doing will be on our Facebook at uh, ahocsa.com. Um, we definitely will promote the children being for sale at the Alton Farmers Market from uh, various uh, wild uh, harvesters as well. So you can find that at the Alton Farmers Market page on Facebook, um, and as well as our um, work one as Aho CSA. Uh, with that, thank you all. Um, have a good evening. Happy picking. Um, enjoy what the land gives to us and um, have a good evening.